Good evening. This is the only place on your radio where City and United go head to head every single day of the week with the big football news. This is the Excess Manchester Football Social. I'm Jim. Good evening. Tonight for City, we've got former Blue Gary Owen. Gio in the studio. Evening, Gio. Hi, James. And for the Reds, we've got Manchester United legend Mickey Thomas. Evening, Hello, Mickey T. Jim. What's going on, mate? Very Come good. On. And we've got Alex taking your texts and tweets. Hello, Alex. Evening, Jim. All ready for the texts and tweets? Good. Right, well, you can get there, mate. Double seven, double one is the text number. You can tweet into at XS Manchester. And as always, you can pick up the phone and have a natter with the two legends in the studio. 0345 treble one 76 25 is the phone number. City had a bit of a rest this weekend, I guess, but there's still plenty to talk about. Not least Manchester United's 2-0 win in the FA Cup, sealing a semi-final appointment with Tottenham Hotspur, which will be played as it stands at Spurs' temporary home at Wembley Stadium. Is that fair? Is that right? Is it going to give advantage to the London club? And should it be changed by the FA? Your thoughts? 0345 7625 is the number. 87711 is the text number. But first things first, I want to kick off the show today by talking about Jose Mourinho, as we have been doing for seemingly the last fortnight. But it's of his own making. It's of his own fruition that we're ending up talking so much about Mourinho because of the things he keeps on saying. And I want to talk particularly about Jose Mourinho's post-match comments after the win. Let's not forget the win in the FA Cup because Mickey... Jose wasn't happy. Even after a 2-0 win against Brighton, Jose Mourinho had the right grump on. Well, I've seen him. I went down to the press conference um, to see what he had to say because lots of people were in that, in that press room. Gary, it was full. You couldn't get a seat, so I do well to find one, to be honest. But, uh, you know, he's, he has a, a different uh, take on the game, like we all have, of course. Um, it wasn't a great performance. Uh, and he was right what he said. Some of the players didn't play to their level a uh, uh, performance that were required by Manchester United. He did say something that obviously close to my heart about some players sometimes <coughs> can't handle it. And uh, I've been in that situation playing for Manchester United where sometimes the pressure can get to you. Um, and when that happens, you, you play within yourself. Um, but as I said, it, it was a performance, I would think, not one of the best over the season, but they got the result what they needed and get into that semi-final. But um, if you want to look at it in a different way... Um, United certainly aren't going to win the league. City are far superior. Um, I don't like saying it, but Gary knows what my feelings are. They are the best team in the Premier League. Um, we've only got real one real option to win a trophy, and that's the FA Cup. So we have to focus on that. And with a draw, uh, Gary uh, and you, Jim, and, and Sir Alex, is that the right way to play at Wembley when Tottenham's home games are at Wembley? Should it be played elsewhere, or should they toss a coin, Old Trafford or Wembley? What would you do, Gio? Listen, they haven't made the best of starts to begin with at Wembley. It was like in a away yeah. ground all the time. For but they're all right now. They found yeah, their feet at course, the stadium. Yeah, of course. But now. hang on a minute. Uh, playing at Wembley uh, for me, it do not matter. You've got the home home dressing room, uh, so they have to move into the away team dressing room. I don't think uh, Wembley Stadium is Wembley Stadium. You want to play there? Yeah, so you, I don't think it gives any great advantage. I don't believe it does. But we shall wait and see. Um, the Mourinho debacle is. Debacle's a good word. Hilarious. He seems to be losing the plot, doesn't Absolutely. he? Absolutely. He's not the he's not the Mourinho that was funny, witty, charming. He's gone completely. I mean, he was mentioning everything, but mainly about himself. What he's done. Me, 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 me. As if Manchester United are doing him a favour, having him as manager. Well, he needs to shape up. They brought him in there to to improve. Uh, the performances mm-hmm. that David Moyes had started after Alex and then Van Gaal. Van Gaal won FA Cup. He got the peddlers. Uh, Jose Mourinho won the Europa Cup and the uh, and the Carabao Cup. So he, he won two trophies. Man United wanted him to, him to do it with a, a different style. This season has been poor for Manchester United, even though you look, they was into the last 16 of the uh, Champions League. Uh, they was in the second in the league. And then the semi-final of the FA Cup, and we're saying it's poor. But the performance-wise, has been dreadful. And really, that Luke Shaw, if I was Luke Shaw, I'd just say, listen, don't even think of picking me again. I know I'm going to leave this football club, which everybody dreams of coming to play for. Me, get me out of here as quick as I can. 
Well, I'm this, not a celebrity, but get me out of here. That's this what was one of the standout bits <laughs> from his post-match he, press conference. He's been absolutely slaughtered. It was only two weeks Bullied ago. It was saying a good phrase. about him. Yes, he's training harder. He's losing weight. He's doing. I mean, all the stuff that you've no need to do if he's your player. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, he'll be here for a long time. I want him to sign a new contract. And then he does that at half-time. I mean... It does seem very strange that they're creating divisions in the dressing room. And even no Sanchez, the day of a, no Pogba, but yeah. neither of them played well. Even neither on the day of a victory, to go in on a team like that and to single out an individual who, at the end of the day, wasn't responsible for any one particularly negative moment. He wasn't responsible for a goal being conceded. And maybe he didn't play... As we can expect, and his as we corridor, know, sure does. his corridor was open. By the way. I, I, I think. I mean, what he what he's come out with, obviously, and he, he watches the player day in, day out, then he on the training ground. Um, maybe you know he didn't see the level of fitness that he should be at. Um, maybe verbally um, in the media, uh, exposing it, um, everyone can have a look at what he's saying. I'm not in that way of thinking. You know, if I was a player, I, I would be devastated that my mind's going to hammer me, but. You got to get on with it, I suppose. That's the modern game. I heard that is it Ronnie Mullenstein that was the assistant to Sir Alex. He yeah. said never, ever at his time at Old Trafford would they ever uh, single out a player uh, for criticism. Certainly not out there in the wide open world. Maybe inside the closed doors, and they may be having a quiet word with him, but he mm. never saw it at any time when he was there. But yeah. you know, Manchester United have, Manchester United have changed in, in the way. You know, Sir Alex Ferguson was a dynasty. But yeah, I think, Jim, but and, and go... you, let me just say Sorry. this one. Oh, no, we're both former players here. Is that it's that the level of criticism at Luke Shaw is probably obviously hard for him to to take. But what that does do, it puts a little bit more pressure on him because the fans are looking into that and maybe saying that maybe he isn't fit enough, maybe he should get fit, you know, and that puts pressure on him immensely more, doesn't it, guys? Yeah, but you know, Mickey, his, his injury's over now and he had a horrific injury, came back. Mm. Isn't it up to the manager, the coaching staff, physios, whoever it is, to get those players in shape? Yeah, you'd think so. Is there and the player day? has to take some responsibility, you know, we're in, we're but he's only now. 22 years old. Of You've course, got to that yeah, as but well. they, listen, all football clubs now, they, they monitor you every day. Mm. Yeah, I guess, again, I'll go back to the manager. I mean, he in, they, uh, works out with him every day of the week. Um, and he probably is the manager and he's in charge to say what he wants, I suppose. Yeah, but if he... And he's the way... That's if he thinks he's overweight, Mick, or he's not right, why yeah. pick him? We're going to go to Stuart on the phone in a minute who yeah. wants to have his say on Luke Shaw and uh, the singling out of him for criticism as after the Brighton game. Let me just read you the quotes that Jose Mourinho said after the game, though, in case you missed it at the weekend. So he in his post-match interview, said, Luke in the first half, every time they come into his corridor, the cross was coming and a dangerous situation was coming in. So I was not happy with his performance. So that was the criticism that was levelled at Luke Shaw. Stuart, evening, mate. Hi, mate, how are you doing? Very well, my friend. What did you want to say on Luke Shaw? Do you think it's fair that he's being made, well, a scapegoat, I guess, for the performance? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't actually think it is fair. I mean, I think the first thing is, I think the lad's got to have a, a run of games to, to, to get a bit of momentum. You know, at any level of playing football, you've kind of got to get in your rhythm and get in the swing of it, and he, he keeps getting jolted by Mourinho. The, the, only, the only thing where, when we're talking a bit before, when you were saying about the fitness side of things, I think Van Gaal had the same issue with him. And for me, there's a little bit of... There's no smoke without fire, so I kind of think Shaw's got a responsibility as a as a, as a professional footballer for uh, playing at the club that he's at. Also, as well for uh, the time when he left um, Southampton for the amount of money, he sort of got. He shouldn't have to be. He shouldn't have to be told constantly about his weight and his fitness. I get the I get the point about the team doing their job to get him at that peak. But I, I think there might be some in that. Obviously, I don't see what goes on on training ground, but I think it's an easy way for Mourinho to pick on somebody that, when these high status managers come in. A little bit like when Pep came in at Man City and he, he sort of seemed to pick a bit on Joe Hart. Proven right now, probably. But they, they seem to have to have a player that they, they need as a scapegoat when someone's not quite, quite as it should be. Can I just say one thing? Um, when you say pick on Joe Hart, he never came out publicly and said that Joe Hart was not good enough. He's never come out publicly and said, he, all this he's done is, is brought in a goalkeeper that he thought was better than what he had, as he did with Zabaleta, who was a crowd favourite, as he did with Kolarov, mm -hmm. as he did with others. He brought in players because he felt the others weren't good enough. I don't think he came out publicly about Joe. I think Joe said he wanted a chance. He'd watched him for a season, maybe two seasons before he came to us. 
I felt at the time that maybe he should have been given a chance, but when I look back now, <laughs> he's a far better keeper. Yeah, yeah guys, I think he made it obvious that he didn't want Joe. Yeah, of course. And, I, and, yeah, I, and that's, his, the call that's his what, choice as, yeah. a, as a manager. But he didn't yeah, publicly attack it. Really. No, he didn't publicly attack it. To the caller as well, I think, you know, he's, 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 he's right in some respect in saying that, you know, what goes on in training, we don't see him day in, day out, Lee Shaw. We don't know how he performed in that training session. But he, he got the opportunity to play, and I, I think what Chiel said before, a catalogue of injuries that has disrupted his uh, career at Old Trafford. But when he's come back in, it's up to him, uh, and obviously to, to play well, and, and you know, I'm not saying he's unfit, but it must be the reason why he's had a go at him. It, maybe he's tried a different but way. But it doesn't now he's work, Nicky. He's done it before. We've seen it through the season. For about 24 months now, we've just heard Jose Mourinho criticising Luke Shaw. Occasionally he's praised him and the Jim, criticism you know, doesn't work. Whether you like this or not, and anyone listening probably won't like it, but unfortunately that you know you have to understand he's a manager of Manchester United and he has to make big decisions and uh, strong decisions. And if he wants to come out publicly and obviously give uh, Luke Shaw um, some of well, say these, but, uh, negativity, well, Luke Shaw will have to obviously respond to that by you know, probably getting fit and, and playing good football. But I think what the caller said is right as well. He does need a run of games. He hasn't had that opportunity of late. And that is what the caller said is completely right. He hasn't had that opportunity. Stuart, let me ask you, as a United fan, and Gary picked up on this earlier, he said, Man United as a club, since the days of Alex Ferguson, has changed. Are you happy with Jose Mourinho and the way he treats the club and the fans and himself in the media and the way he presents himself. To you, is that Manchester United and how you should be seen? I mean, I think the, the fundamental thing is it, it's different, isn't it? So the run under Ferguson were quite long. Man United hadn't experienced much change and obviously it became turbulent after that. I think in respect, respect to Mourinho, I, I actually am a little undecided because history speaks for itself and he's very, very successful. And the ways he goes about doing that, uh, the, the, his ways, do I agree with him? Uh, not particularly like particularly like singling people out. I think that's one that you, you leave behind closed doors. Um, I, to be honest with you, I think it as well is I think his style's a little outdated as well. I think his tactics worked of old in the past very successfully, but I think he need, just needs to freshen it up a bit, a little bit like Arsene Wenger in a way that they're sort of stuck in a period of time where the game's moved on. Um, he probably needs a little bit more time. I'm not one for sacking managers after sort of six or seven games where they've not had successful results, and he's had a lot of money as well, so I think he needs to start. You know, is the FA Cup enough for Manchester United after the amount of money that's been spent? I don't think that it is. He, he, he's maybe got another season to prove that he can He can still do it. Cheers, Stu. Thanks for coming on. appreciate that. Guys, I don't Cheers. know if you, if you uh, read an article that Oliver Holt wrote in the Mail on Sunday. Yes, it was absolutely man. bang on. What did he say? Was what, was, what was the feeling? Face, the, the most of it was is uh, is that Mourinho's saying it's not about him. Yet he spoke for twelve minutes and longer, mm -hmm. mainly about him. About the two, you know, it's not like uh, you know United. It's not as though they're not used to being knocked out of here. I knocked him out with Porto. I knocked him out with Madrid. I did this. I did that. I did the other. So it's not as though they're not used to it. Uh, and his opinion on the severe game, which nobody else, even two of his, is. Not his, but uh, United's probably most famous players in Ferdinand and uh, and Scholes sat there. I mean, Paul Scholes was almost waiting for that t uh, for the that game to be finished and him to get off TV because he didn't want to say what he really wanted to say because it's not what Manchester United have and he couldn't agree with what um, what Mourinho was saying that he thought they played well, they played at a, a pace, they did this. Only he could see it. The fans could, couldn't see it. Me as a blue couldn't see it. Mm. United. Former players couldn't see it. So he could see everything. And then they beat Bournemouth, uh, sorry, Brighton, and then he comes out and almost ridicules everybody apart from Matic and a and other. I don't know the other. It's a bizarre scenario. Oh, bizarre. I think I can sum up every single Jose Mourinho press conference I've seen in this season in three words. Not my fault. Yeah, yeah. Everything seems to focus around that. One final word and thought on the... Luke Shaw scenario because I keep on coming back to the fact he is 22 years old he is a young player I think when I was 22 years old there's no way I'd be able to handle that element of public criticism if you guys look at yourselves as young players remember when you were coming up through the ranks where you were in your careers at 22 how would you have reacted if your manager at that stage had come out and criticised but you but he's not way? even started yet because he was at Southampton once I think yeah, yeah. and then you know it, 
he started to make an effort. Got United, got injured almost immediately. He was out for nearly a year. I mean, and he's only 22 now. You know, it's a big jump, as Mickey will tell you. Not everybody can just go into Old Trafford and the expectations and start, and especially when you're a young player. So, I think it's a bit harsh. I'm not just getting on the Mourinho bandwagon. I think it's harsh. Mm. I think I think the treatment of Rashford, how he's never played him when everybody in the world would play him, you know, like I said, I'd love to have him at City. I'd love to have him have a squad at City. But, but, but pressure, as you mentioned before, I mean, on, on Luke Shaw in, in, in himself, I'm just saying from a different angle, he might not be able to handle it. He might not be able to handle Old Trafford. And you might think that's quite unusual, but he's a young lad, he said. He came with a good reputation. I didn't think he started that well. He just started to get into his stride when he got that horrific mm-hmm. injury. And he's never really recovered from that properly in, in terms of fitness-wise and that. And, you know, that's why the, a manager works day in, day out with him. Maybe he sees something that we don't, you know. Um, I think he's got the ability. I think you're right, Jim. He, he has it. And um, I, I think the ability to play at the highest level. But at this moment in time, he seems a little bit lost for me. But, you know, if he's not fit, Mourinho and his coaching staff will see it. And get him fit. That's the whole idea. Is to, that's what you're there for? Is is to test him to see what the you know how they're living, how they're eating. How they're, that's exactly what happens in this day. From Nutrition. my understanding, well, he's given him an opportunity on Saturday to see, from my understanding, show him what he can do. He's you know the manager sees it different, Jim. He wasn't happy in that 45 minutes what he what he did in his performance. So we cannot knock. Jose Mourinho in that respect because he's the manager that wants to change it for the best and not for the worse. He thinks he's not you know, he's not being productive. Done that I thought Brighton side. played well for stuff stuff, actually. Yeah. From my understanding with Luke Shaw as well, during his time in Southampton, he was very carefully man-managed. It's a different level. Someone level, looking after Jim, him. Honestly, I'm sorry, to, I'm, sorry to, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry to say about Southampton, no disrespect to, to that football club, mm-hmm. but they're not anywhere near the level United No, he's not, but he came. He, well, he comes to Old Trafford as a very young man that gets injured for nearly a year. Yeah. 